Hey, it's Mike here, and today I am responding to the nutritional claims and habits of neuroscientist Andrew Huberman, who always makes me think of Andrew Glauberman from Big Mouth, which is a very funny cartoon show, tangent. The point is, he has some very interesting points about butter. First of all, I am not shy about my love for butter. I will eat pats of butter directly. In particular, I just had to respond to his comments around butter, cholesterol, hormones, and brain function. For those that don't know, Andrew Huberman is a Stanford professor and he has a podcast called Huberman Lab, which I just checked. I knew it was popular, but it's number 29 on Apple's top 100 podcasts. And I will say, I think it's a great podcast in general. I suggest it in conversation more than pretty much any other podcast out there. I've listened to it for a long time. I kind of feel like I got in on the ground floor. Hope that's enough to let you know I'm not just trying to drag this guy, but the point is, even though he's great on the topic of the brain and neuroscience, and he has a ton of scientific rigor around that, he doesn't seem to have the same amount of rigor around dietary claims and views, and with somebody who's so right about another topic, people might take his dietary points as gospel, even though he sort of tells them not to do that. Anyway, let's just go. First, I just wanna say when listening to his podcast, whenever the vegan topic comes up, he always tries to say, you know, it's fine if you're vegan, blah, 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 and remains neutral on the topic. So I'm definitely gonna be that vegan who comes in and sort of goes after the person who's neutral. I'm gonna try and do it in a not too aggressive way. You know how vegans can get. But let's hear what he has to say about cholesterol in his Maximizing Productivity podcast episode. The sex steroid hormones, which include testosterone, and estrogen, they are manufactured from cholesterol. We hear about cholesterol as this terrible thing, but they are actually made from cholesterol. And so if you don't get sufficient levels of cholesterol, that can be problematic for your hormones and that can be problematic for your brain and your body health. You know, he's sort of painting cholesterol here as some scarce nutrient that you really need to get in your diet in order to make enough of these sex hormones, which of course everybody wants to make sure are under control. And, and I thought maybe I'm nitpicking here. Maybe he didn't really mean get enough cholesterol through diet. Maybe he meant make enough cholesterol and it was just a word issue, semantics. No, it turns out he actually really, really is about eating it in the diet. So I eat butter in order to ensure that I get sufficient cholesterol. Yes, he deliberately eats butter to get enough cholesterol. No, this is not a normal habit. This is not common dietary advice that I see out there. But the most important point here, which I did not at least see him, hear him cover, is that cholesterol is not an essential nutrient, meaning that you don't have to get it from an outside source. Your body makes all of the cholesterol that it needs via your liver. And to echo that, even Healthline, which tends to have a low carb slant says, quote, your body makes all the cholesterol it needs. And in the Western world, the problem is the exact opposite. People are making way more cholesterol than they need because they're eating a high amount of dietary saturated fat. We'll dip our toes in a little bit of research on that connection here, but I just wanna mention that from this Harvard chart, in the US, the main dietary sources of saturated fat are all dairy. And speaking of dairy, back to Mr. Huberman. First of all, I am not shy about my love for butter. I will eat pats of butter directly. I believe if people are going to eat cheese without a cracker, I will eat butter without a cracker. Butter is high in cholesterol, so I don't eat a ton of it, but at least for me and for my lipid profiles, it's fine. Oh man, that's just, that's not great. But something I would love to know is which came first, his love for butter or his reasoning for why he needs to eat butter. <laughs> At the very least though, I'm happy that he's not a full on cholesterol denier, denying the relationship between dietary cholesterol as well as dietary saturated fat and blood cholesterol. He has some level of concern there. But again, volume is important. You can't overdo it. While still eating straight pats of butter. But just to cover the bases for those that might be cholesterol deniers watching this, uh, yes, in fact, from meta-analyses, we see that eating saturated fat raises that cholesterol, and most importantly, higher LDL is causally linked with coronary artery disease, with heart disease, our leading killer. Anyway, let's move on to the whole hormones and diet thing, because he's really painting a picture that in order to have healthy levels of sex hormones, which of course, again, people are really scared to have low levels of, you need to be eating things like butter to get your cholesterol up. This is simply not a rational line of reasoning. I mean, 
people who eat absolutely no animal fat, you would think that they would have the lowest levels, super low crashing levels of sex hormones like testosterone. Well, one group that eats no animal fat is of course people who are vegan. And from this study, the vegans had equivalent levels of free testosterone and higher levels of total testosterone. As I say, a little bit more man in the system and my testosterone is at 666. You don't need to eat animals to make sex hormones. You don't need to eat animals to be a man. No more doubles, no more double fat for cholesterol. I'm just gonna try and find like a metal track to put under that. I already did, if I did. If I didn't, <laughs> this, is, this is a problem. But the main point here is clearly, even within this group that has on average way lower levels of cholesterol than people that eat meat, they still have equivalent, if not higher levels of these sex hormones that they make from cholesterol. Therefore, it's clear that the body has enough of its own cholesterol creation to make all of the hormones that it needs. Mechanism doesn't equal real life concern. I guess that's the main point in that one. But what does concern me here is that, well, he does make the point that he isn't trying to give dietary advice or anything like that. In this case, he is tying this dietary component directly back to brain function, which is the topic that he is giving a bunch of usually really legit advice on and is trusted on. Butter has cholesterol, which is a precursor to the sex steroid hormones. And men and women need testosterone and estrogen in order to feel good and to be able to think and to be able to think. So somebody connecting the dots here literally could be like, I need to eat butter so that I can think clearly. And I just do not think that is correct. Again, people who don't eat butter have the hormones in the levels that they need in order to think clearly. And I'd also go further to just be a little bit of a contrarian and say, what about women who are postmenopausal and their estrogen goes down? Does that mean that they aren't able to think clearly? I'm just being a bad boy now. And he also seems to think that the benefits of butter outweigh the risks, yes the benefits of butter. Here he is. Butter also has some other things that are beneficial. Various small fatty acids that are that are interesting um, in terms of their effects on metabolism, etc. You can look those up, the benefits of butter. So just to recap, when it comes to things like neuroscience, he is so good about getting good quality data and studies, research, blah de blah de blah But when it comes into the realm of something that he likes to eat, also butter, it's just, you know, just Google why it's good for you, because that's definitely gonna come up with some neutral results. Let's actually do it. You know, Google, why is butter good for you? On the first page, we see things like this article, 13 reasons why you should be eating more butter, which has a cholesterol denier preamble, talking about again, why you know, cholesterol isn't a concern for heart disease. And then it rambles about some fat soluble vitamins, which come up every once in a while in the realm of butter, but, but checking chronometer, maybe four pats of butter, tracking that nutrition, well, Yes, it zooms you right up to 10 grams of saturated fat or so, but it is abysmally low in vitamins and minerals. It is not a good source of nutrients and nobody should be relying on butter for vitamins and minerals. By contrast, let's look at a plant source of fat. We can check out perhaps the same amount of calories in chia seeds and blammo, not only is it super good in terms of those ALA omega-3s, you know, it also does pretty dang well for about 100 calories in terms of minerals and on and on. So, so no, butter's not a good source of nutrients and you should not be motivated to eat it for nutrients. <laughs> but bigger picture here, I think the part that worries me is that there seems to be a larger concern here for getting enough cholesterol than having too much cholesterol when he's talking to a probably mostly US based or Western audience. And no, the average American does not need to be eating more butter, which brings me to, could there perhaps be mental slash brain function concerns about eating too much butter? This was actually one of the main motivators to me initially going vegan because this disease runs in my family and that is, Alzheimer's, or as I call it, clogged brain arteries. It seems like we've collectively forgotten that in Alzheimer's original work, like this 1907 paper, he cites atherosclerotic changes in the brain. In other words, artery disease within the brain of subjects. That was the finding which most people don't seem to be aware of. And then subsequently we can see things like squeamish alert, cross sections of brain arteries of those with and without Alzheimer's. And you can see that they're significantly clogged in the Alzheimer's group versus normal. 
And the main difference perhaps could be those beta amyloids that build up within the plaque. It's still a plaque issue. And then that of course does more damage. But overall, we're still talking about roughly the same phenomenon that happens with heart disease. And as we've talked about, more saturated fat in the form of things like butter raises LDL. LDL ends up creating more plaque in the arteries, more artery disease. And since my video on Alzheimer's, more high quality evidence has come out. And that brings me to this 2020 meta analysis, as they call meta meta analysis, because it looked at a hundred studies and five meta analyses, which is pretty impressive. They found that increased LDL, that bad cholesterol was connected with increased Alzheimer's disease risk, concluding quote, these results strengthen the evidence that LDLC cholesterol levels increase the risk for Alzheimer's disease. And in particular, we're looking at about two and a half times the odds of Alzheimer's disease for those with higher LDL levels. However, even with all this, the higher HDL didn't appear to have a statistically significant effect. So people relying on that to protect them, you know, a little bit sketchy. And I'm saying that because I have a hunch, I have a feeling that he might be relying on HDL. I could be wrong, but here he is. At least for me and for my lipid profiles, it's fine. When people say their lipid profile is good when they eat meat in a Western diet and things like butter, usually it means that their doctor said, oh, their HDL actually looks like it's high enough that it's probably gonna be helpful and they might not have a super high LDL, but the reality is, this is within the frame of Western diet. They're saying, oh, under 100 milligrams is optimal, but it's very clearly not. You know, it's just putting you slightly ahead of the pack of people who will most likely die of heart disease. And in the case of studies like this, in a land where healthy heart donors, healthy, appear to have atherosclerosis in their heart in about 50% of cases. And I believe Andrew Huberman is in his 40s from this study, Healthy Heart Donors had you know about an 80% rate of atherosclerosis of the heart in that age group. So it makes sense why an upgraded ideal LDL would be from several doctors, including Dr. Esselstyn, in around 50 to 70 milligrams of LDL. And as I mentioned before, doctors like Esselstyn and Ornish take the animal fat out and they get amazing results, incredible results in terms of adverse events dropping and those scans of blood flow and on and on. And then of course, Ornish's study in the Lancet with 60% lower adverse events in his intervention group. This is incredible stuff from taking the animal fat out largely. And if I had to guess, I think that Andrew Huberman is just a bit of a victim of that very successful dairy industry campaign of the whole butter is back and those meta-analyses that they paid for. You know, the National Dairy Council is behind a lot of those studies or they're done by people who are career dairy scientists, even though they don't disclose it. And all of that together, paying people to write about it has just shifted the consciousness for a few people. So having research like that could convince somebody like Andrew Huberman, who is research oriented without looking too deep into it, that butter is good. He already likes it. Why not eat straight pats of butter? But no, there's a little bit more going on as you've seen in this video. So in the end, when it comes to neuroscience, yes, Andrew Huberman, straight out of Stanford, boom, amazing on that. But I kind of feel like when it comes to diet advice, He's straight out of like the CrossFit gym with all of the cholesterol is good and blah blah. That maybe sounded a little harsher than I meant, but the point is that I don't think that people should be encouraged to eat more butter, keep eating butter, maybe eat straight pats of butter like somebody who is really good on another subject like neuroscience, like it's not the same subject. Yes, people are concerned about brain function. Yes, they're concerned about hormones, but they should not be scared into eating butter. And also the effects on their brain could end up being negative in the long run anyway with things like Alzheimer's and other dementia that is rooted in atherosclerosis of the brain and on and on and on. And finally, thanks to Tom of the Plant Paradigm Podcast which I'll be on in October for letting me know and highlighting that he said this because I listened to it in passing in the car a while back, I believe. And it was just like, oh, that sounds kind of off, but didn't worry about it. But yes, I'm happy that I covered it. And let me know down below if you listen to the podcast and what you think about uh, Andrew's views on diet. I doubt that he'll watch this, but uh, hopefully he doesn't hate me for uh, pointing out things I disagree with him about. Anyway, feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Notification bell.